Bela Lugosi, his triumph and testimony overcoming drug addiction with biographer Gary Don Rhodes. The image of Count Dracula, the vampire from Bram Stoker's novel, is embodied in the public's imagination thanks to actor Bela Lugosi. The Hungarian-born Lugosi, born October 20th, 1882, began his career as an actor on the stage in 1902. He debuted in films in 1917. In 1919, he fled to Weimar, Germany, after the failed Hungarian Communist Revolution, where he continued to act on stage and in films. He made his way to America, and in the 1920s in New York, acted in plays with other Hungarian immigrants and made appearances in films. In 1927, he was asked to play Dracula in a new Broadway production that opened in 1928. With the play's success, Universal Pictures made a film of it in 1931. Lugosi was not the first choice to play Dracula. Other actors were considered as the film was in development. But, lucky for Bela Lugosi, he was cast. And this part brought him fame and stardom and the curse of typecasting as a Hollywood boogeyman, much like the early stardom of his colleague Boris Karloff, with whom he co-starred with in several films. In 1935, Lugosi, under a doctor's care, began receiving morphine injections as a painkiller for shooting pains in his legs. A few years later, Lugosi was introduced to methadone and barbiturates. For 20 years, an addiction to these narcotics took hold of Lugosi. Bouts of alcoholism made things worse, until, in his early 70s, Lugosi faced these terrible addictions and admitted himself into California's Metropolitan State Hospital in 1955. After three months, Lugosi was clean and released from treatment. The triumph was brief. Lugosi died peacefully in his sleep on August 16, 1956. He was 73 years old. Here is author and Lugosi biographer, Gary Don Rhodes. In 1955, when Bela Lugosi entered the Metropolitan State Hospital for drug rehabilitation, there was a tremendous amount of publicity in newspapers across the nation. There was also a good deal of publicity when he was released, including the chance to appear on camera a few times. A, a couple of the interviewers uh, Seem to have treated him rather unfairly, though, such as the Tom Dugan show. That program, there's no copy of it now, alas. It doesn't seem to exist, but there is another that does. This footage that we're about to watch, while it's not particularly an unbiased interview, uh, certainly not very friendly, it is an important historical document. So let's take a look. very grateful to the state uh, hospital that I, they allowed me and took me when I volunteered. You see, previously I was in a private sanatorium, but they, were, they weren't as strict, so I was, uh, I was afraid it was going to take too long. But now we made a short cut. It was very... How long have you been in the institution, Mr. Uh, three months. Three months. Because 90 days is the state law. Mm -hmm. It's minimum. What did you weigh when you came in, about, or how much underweight were you when you... Oh, I was 45 pounds underweight. 45? Yes. Have you put most of that back? Oh, yes, I regained 21 pounds. Mm -hmm. And you feel like your old self again. You <laughs> I feel, feel like a million dollars. You feel like Dracula really felt, huh? Sure. Yeah. That is best. I'm looking forward to work again. I understand that. I had an assignment uh, playing the star part in uh, The Google Goes West. Uh -huh. Yes, and uh, Eddie Woods is going to be the yeah. producer. And you're going to enter that as soon as you leave there. Surely. Well, that's fine. How did you ever hap happen to be 
to get on narcotics was put up. Oh, I had a very painful ailment. My sciatic nerves uh, bothered me terribly. I suffered very much, so I went to the doctor and he gave me some narcotics to kill the pain. That happened about uh, every week once, and it helped me so much. It put me so much in a good uh, state of feeling that I used it later myself, even if I didn't have pain. Did you ever have any trouble getting it? No, because the doctor prescribed it. Mm -hmm. I didn't buy it on the black market. But you were able, if you had wished to, you could have bought it on the black market. As well. I could have, but I didn't need it. Yes, it would cost too much money, and so I got it. Uh, really, it doesn't co cost me much than uh, more. You had, uh, excuse me, you had other worries as well as uh, narcotics at one time, but in the last few years. You had domestic, old domestic Yes, yes, uh, domestic problems. Uh, mm -hmm. Alcohol, I believe. Alcohol, domestic problem. I have a, had a very young wife. She was 30 years younger than I, and uh -huh. she felt that uh, perhaps she has a right to be happy not to be chained to an old man. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. How, uh, she thought what so. about your alcoholic situation? Uh, oh, have I, you, uh, I kicked it off three years ago. You have been away from it three years. Yes, I joined Alcoholic Anonymous, and I gave it up. I see. Well, you're certainly looking fine. What, uh, what advice, if you had just to say another half a minute on this, Good telling news uh, era here. What would you What would you say to the people who are either on narcotics, have been on it, or even would ever consider going to the, their first part? Now, for those who are on it, I would really suggest that they shall go right away and uh, report their volunteer to a state hospital and get cured. Get whatever get cured, whatever yes. state they're in. Yes, whatever state they're in, or to go to go to a federal hospital. And for those who are just in danger. I would say they should be very careful, should pray, and should and shouldn't start it because it's a terrible ordeal to go through a withdrawal. It's the greatest pain in the in the world. And Dracula was nothing compared to that. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you looking so well and the best of success Thank you. back in the film. I appreciate you want to see you yeah. back in your and your fans. I'm looking forward to seeing my fans again in my next picture. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bela Lugosi was particularly eager to talk about the evils of drug addiction, the problems of narcotics in America, after his release from the hospital. His greatest opportunity came when Senator Price Daniel from Texas offered him the chance to speak in front of a Senate subcommittee hearing about narcotics in the United States. The original idea was that Lugosi would travel to Washington, D.C., but there were a couple of barriers there. One was he was probably not well enough in 1955 to undertake the trip. Secondly, he really couldn't leave the state of California initially. There was a period of time after his release where he had to remain in the state and continue seeing a doctor. So what happened was he had the chance to still uh, speak to the Senate subcommittee, but in California. Price Daniel moved the committee hearing to California in part due to Lugosi, but in part because California at the time seems to have had the worst drug um, addiction problems in America. And so while it was based in California, the subcommittee heard from some drug users, uh, some doctors, various people, and Bela Lugosi. It was a very important day for him. One of his friends I knew, Richard Sheffield, talked about it, you know, that how he wanted to make a, a good impression. He bought a new cane to use that day, uh, dressed nicely and so forth, carefully thought about what he was going to say. And then he proceeded to give his testimony when called. We knew about this testimony for many years. It existed, the transcript, the written transcript in the U.S. Senate um, archives. And I'd even published some of it once upon a time. What we didn't know, though, until very recently, just in the past week or so, a great Lugosi researcher, a wonderful friend of mine, Mario J. Toland, notified me about the fact that footage, film footage of Lugosi speaking in front of that committee hearing existed. We had read Lugosi's words in print. Now we can see him speak them and hear his voice, uh, his commanding voice, his sincere voice, I believe, in this hitherto extremely unknown, still very rare clip that I believe is very important to learn more about Lugosi, his legacy, and his problems with drug addiction. Let's take a look. Thank you. It takes rare courage to defeat the dope habit. 
this witness did it after years of addiction that nearly ruined his motion picture career. He is Bella Lugosi of Dracula fame. Thank you. You may be seated. Hey, Bella, I'm sorry to, to invite me for that evening. And uh, I think it's a wonderful effort of the Senate to appoint a committee to look into the great tragedy of America, especially as far as the youth is concerned. Well, I want to thank you, Mr. Lugosi, for appearing before this committee and giving us uh, something concerning uh, your unfortunate experiences with the narcotic drug. And I have a son. I was 18 years old. And uh, he fortunately has a father whom he saw who is destroying himself. So he's not in danger. And naturally, I wish all the boys should have somebody or some example to see what it means to be a drug addict so that they shall stay away from it because the most terrible thing in the world is worse than cancer than anything. And to go through a withdrawal, it means H-E-L-L. It's worse than a cancer pain. It's the most terrible thing in the world. And now here again is Senator Daniel. To learn more about Lugosi's fascinating life and work, we suggest these books. Available from Bear Manor Media, Amazon, and Barnes & Noble.